Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is the walkthrough to OSINT exercise 026. On my website you can find a number of OSINT exercises to practice these skills. If you have not attempted to solve this one yet, you can find the link in the description and give it a go first. If you're here because you have completed all of it, well done, you should be very very proud, that was a hard one. If you're here because you want to find out how to solve it, I hope you find this video useful and I hope it makes sense. So welcome to OSINT exercise 026, task briefing, the image below shows the contents of a zip file. Inside you'll find a 31 second video recorded during a train ride and four photos of undisclosed locations. They were all taken by the same individual in February 2024. Despite having no useful metadata, and I'm already telling you that, they still contain enough information to track down this person's movements. Your task is to determine a and that's it, at which train stations, plural, did the person board and alight. So we're looking for the location or name of two train stations, the first where they started the ride and the second where they finished the trip and left the train station. I marked this exercise as hard for everyone. I think it's a bit challenging, I'm not sure. And I added bonus challenges. I don't usually do that, I did it this time. So here they are, identify the mode of transportation in each image. So four images, this obviously was a train, we know it's a train ride, it's a video, so four images, how are the people moving? Determine the type of train they rode, estimate the speed at which the train was traveling when the footage was recorded, interesting, and calculate approximately how far did the person travel overall. I don't often include bonus challenges, but I felt there was so much information in these five files that it would have been a waste to just focus on one task. And because it's already a hard challenge, I didn't want to ask people to do too much. So it's up to you if you want to just solve the exercise task and be done with it or go for everything. I also think that whilst analyzing the five files, you will possibly even by accident find the answer to several of these bonus questions anyway. With that in mind, this video will cover everything and that's why it's so long and I deeply regret it. I'm sorry. So let's do this. Let's go on a manhunt. Not saying that the person is a man. It could have been a woman. I'm not telling you. But woman hunt doesn't flow as well, does it? So and it sounds a bit creepy. So we're going on a manhunt. And just so you know, I did get permission to do this. The person who took the photos and recorded the video is well aware of what I was planning to do with them, which in my opinion is a very dangerous thing. So anyway, first step is to download the zip file. So I already have it here. Let me just bring it this way. So here are the contents of the zip file. Let's quickly look at them. First, we see the video mentioned in the briefing. So let's quickly watch it, see what interesting details we can find along the way. We're not going to analyze it very deeply. We're just going to quickly glance at it. Let me pause it before it gets too far ahead. Okay, so in general, the train seems to be going through a town. We see a lot of buildings, probably residential properties. There's a decent amount of snow. There's a lot of trees, no foliage. And there is a road parallel to the train tracks that lead to a wider one. Let's check it out. So here we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this road that was parallel, let's just go back a few seconds. Here you go, it leads to a bigger road. There's this very interesting small tiny structure in between the road and the train track, so this is interesting. And then we see what appears to be two petrol stations. So we have one here and one there. So two of them, one each side of the road. Let me go back a few frames again. Okay, so here we go. We can see that there are a lot of cars waiting to cross. So there's the crossing of the train tracks, right? So off we go again. There are suddenly a lot of trees. Look at that. All of them, they're quite small and they all seem to be organized in a pattern. So you go in a row, in a row, a lot of it, more of it, and so on. We may even notice, here you go, let me try to stop in a good place. You may notice that was not a good place. <laughs> Good place. Okay, here we go. We can see the shadows. It's pointing this way. There's a glare at the top. So the sun was more or less here. There we go. So the shadows are very long. This was possibly early morning, late afternoon. We'll find out. Don't worry. So keep watching for a few more seconds. And then towards the end, you can see there's some mountains. And they're very soft mountains. They're not very tall. And let me pause just before this finishes. And look at those horizontal lines. We will probably be able to see them on satellite image, which is great. And that's it. Video done. Let's just close this. And let's look at the picture one by one very quickly. So what do we see here? This one, there's a path, it's wet and there's a ferris wheel in the distance. Next we have a photo of a bridge. There's some people under the bridge and there's some cars driving past. That's it. 
Then we have another photo, there's a road again, there's a building with the word Samsung Galaxy, which might be useful for us, who knows, right? And lastly, we have a photo of what appears to be a market with people selling food. So there's some food here, people are selling food. So how do we get from all of this to the names or locations of the two train stations, which is what we need to find, that's the main task, right? We need to look at the whole picture. Nothing exists in a vacuum, except space that is, but let's not get technical here. So all these photos are connected to the video in some way. They were all taken by the same individual in February 2024, as stated in the briefing. So when we put them all together, they tell a story. We want to know that story. This is our manhunt. So throughout this video, I'll show you how I map this person's movement from start to finish, which is very creepy, but the person was okay with it. So let's go with that. This means that our first question should be, where is the start? How do we know which photo or video was taken first and then second and so on until the last one? We need a timeline, right? We just need to look at the file names. Look at that. When digital cameras or smartphones create new files, they get automatically named following a specific algorithm. In this case, we can see it was IMG underscore four digits with the extension at the end. So we have JPEG for the photos and we have MOV for the video. Both types of files, so the video and the photos follow the exact same system. We can also quickly infer the person was using a smartphone and not a digital camera because of the resolution on these images. And let me show you by checking properties, image, and here we go. The photos all have a resolution of 3024 pixels, width and height of 4032 pixels. They're all taken vertically and both these things are very typical of smartphones. Okay, so let's quickly order these files by selecting the arrange items by name or whatever you have on your operating system because I'm using Linux here so arrange items by name and I'm going to organize them in not reverse order so here you go so this would be the first one 2597 followed by 2626 and so on until 2747 so now we know that the earliest photo was taken in a market the person then went to a place with a ferris wheel afterwards they took a photo of a random road at some point they boarded a train and record this video afterwards they snapped this picture showing a bridge so let's geolocate all of them because all of them are useful some because of what we see and some because of what we don't see. Sometimes the absence of data also gives us crucial information. And what do I mean by that? Let's look at the file names again. So there is, let me see if I can do this, it's going to be weird, but there we go. So between this one and this one, oh my God, horrible arrow. There's 150, oh God, this is tragic. Anyway, 150 digit gap. That means that the person took an enormous amount of photos and videos. This is a lot of data for normal day-to-day -day activity, isn't it? However, it's not out of the ordinary for someone traveling to a new place, is it? It's a typical tourist behavior. So we can establish that our target is traveling through the area. They are not from there. Therefore, they will likely be relying on public transportation to move around or just walking if the distance is short. Okay, let's cancel this. Don't need this picture anymore. Here we go. So let's just start by geolocating the earliest photo of the group starting from this one the one with the market so the first two photos are actually very easy to geolocate because google lens will do all the hard lifting for us so let me show you by dropping the first photo on google images let's bring google images okay and let's just drag let me put this on the other screen and just bring it here here we go brilliant look at that that's a great result here showing these arches and even the same advertisement look at that it's very similar advertisement isn't it so it's probably the same place so let's click on it Great, so this seems to be a blog entry. The person was traveling. Look at that, the advertisement again. Let's see if we can spot those arches. Here we go. This is the photo of the arches and definitely looks like the one from our picture. Let me just bring it here. Definitely very, very similar. So I think we're on the right track here. There's some information right at the top. Here we go, below this person. And let's just translate this. What does it say? It says here, time flows in the air at 42 degrees. I mean, I'm still sweating in the air mixed with mutton seeds and spices in Shorsu Bazaar, Shusu Market. I have no idea how to pronounce that, sorry. Dom Bazaar, Farmer's Market, Tashkent. Okay, so we went to Uzbekistan. Tashkent is the capital of Uzbekistan. Let's check Google Maps. Here we go. And we're going to drop Tashkent Dom Bazaar. And off we go all the way or partial way, kind of stop halfway through. But let's just click the first one, which is the one that we saw this word again. I don't know how to pronounce it. Chorsu Bazaar. Here we go. Off we go. 
all the way there. Just zoom in. I have to do all the hard lifting here. Okay, here we go. So we need to verify that we got the correct place. Obviously, we need to match the details. So let's put the satellite image here. Here we go. Zoom in a bit. And we need to look at the arches. Remember, this is the bit we want to see the arches. So we're going to bring the picture again. Where's the picture? Here it is. I'm going to move it this way. Increase it a bit. We want bigger. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay, I want you to notice now this bits. So we have this arches here. So one, two, this arches here. Then a different color for this arches here. So we have one, two, three, right? Different angle. And then need a different color, this one. Then we have this one is a different angle as well. They're not connected. See, so you see one, two, three sets of arches. We're going to be looking for that and I can see them already. In fact, I can see them here. One, two, and three. And if we look at the picture again, you can see there was a very interesting building as well with two circular things at the top here. So we should be able to see this thing in the distance as well. So we can just get the coordinates from here more or less and get to Google Earth Pro, which I have here and paste those coordinates. Let's see, let's move to Tashkent, to the market in Tashkent specifically, all the way there. Great. Now we need to rotate the camera because remember we were looking more or less in this angle. So again, one, two, three sets of arches. And let's see in the distance if we can spot any building that has two circular things and we do we do have it here it's a building and has two circular things the other one would be in the back and you cannot see i'm going to click here the layer of photos and suddenly you'll see a little icon here so let's just click it and look at that we can see the building and we can compare the building is definitely the same building we are on the correct place in fact i can just close this and i can click the first one and here it is. This is where the person was when they took the photo. And you can see the building in the distance, more or less, more or less that angle kind of thing. So first geolocation done, very easy. We can also partially answer one of the bonus questions. What means of transportation was the person using in this photo? They were on foot. We have established that they're likely not from the area, therefore they would probably not have access to private means of transportation. We can also tell that the person was higher. Look at that. Look at the height they are taking this photo. They're quite high, isn't it? They're not on the ground. They're much taller than everyone else. So they were likely standing on the stairs. So this is not a place that would be easily accessible by car, motorbike, or even a bicycle. So great start. The person was in Tashkent, capital of Uzbekistan, when they took the first photo. Did they stay in the country? Did they travel somewhere else? Stick around to find out. <laughs> so next, second photo. Let me just close this one. Where's the second one? Let's bring it again. Second photo with this one. And this is also very easy to geolocate. Same exact methods as before. Let's go again to Google Images. Go back and we're going to just drop it. Let me move it again. Drop it here. Off we go. And Google Maps is just going to tell us this is the Navrus part. And there's a few photos that are of exact same area. Look at that. So with this information, we just need to put Navrus Park directly into Google Maps. So let's quickly put there. And off we go. Look at that. Very close, isn't it? And if we zoom in a bit, look at that. Look at that beautiful shadow on the ground. This is the Ferris wheel we were looking at. So we know that the person was taking the photo alongside a long corridor surrounded by walls with a Ferris wheel visible in the distance in an approximately 90 degree angle. So look at that. More or less 90 degrees. So we're looking that way. And the Ferris wheel is facing this way. So let's just get the corners of this Ferris wheel on Google Earth because we need to rotate the camera a bit. And off we go to our second destination the ferris wheel okay so we know that we will be looking this way or this way it's clearly not this way there are rows there are trees we don't see any of that in the picture we see this in the picture don't we so let's just rotate this way so we are looking at it from this angle and i'm going to show you what are the corners of the person when they took the photo and here they were they were underneath this thing and you can see how all the details match we have a ferris wheel in distance again we have the corridor and you can even see the decorations look at that let me zoom in a bit and for some reason i don't have this on the correct date here you go look at that all the decorations at the top match all the decorations we see here brilliant we have our second marker okay so what method of transportation was the person using in this 
image. They were very likely on foot again for similar reasons as before. Additionally, it is somewhat likely that the two first photos were taken on the same day. Let me quickly put them side by side. So we have this one here and we're going to bring this one here. Let's increase the size. Let's actually increase even more this one as well. Zoom out a bit. So why do I think they were both taken on the same day? So first of all, there's a small gap of 29 files between each image. Remember the digit. So between this digit and this digit, there were 29 files. We can also see the overall weather is very similar with an overcast sky and a very wet floor, indicating ongoing or recent rain and a few patches of snow. So you can see snow here at the top and here and here. And then also, if you look at where the light seems to be coming from, so this this bit is a bit more light than this one and same here it's a bit more light on this area than it's here in both cases it was from west southwest the direction of where the sun would be setting in fact if you pay attention to the market stalls you'll notice that some of them were already closed for the day look at that the second photo also does not seem to show any shops open despite signs clearly indicating that there were shops there so this this everything is just closed isn't it and I can quickly show you some evidence that they would be open otherwise so let's quickly go again to the park and click on the park which has a lot of pictures here you go over 2,000 pictures that's great so if you scroll about down a bit you will see some of them are of the area that the person took a photo from where are here we go look at that that is the same angle, isn't it? Let's open the picture again. Look at this. This section here is this section here. So all the doors are clearly wide open. They are selling. They want people to come in. This is all closed. They were done for the day. I am therefore very sure that both photos, this one and this one, were taken on the same date. This one first, then this one at the end of the day before sunset. Great. Two done. Next is the third photo. And this one will give us a clue to the first part of our task. Where did they board? the train. We know that the person was in Tashkent in the first two photos and we established that they were both likely taken on the same date. This photo, however, was clearly taken on a different day. And how do we know that? The sun is on the horizon. Look at that. So we're looking at either sunrise or sunset. This therefore could be the same sunset as we have seen in the previous photos. There's only a 32 file gap between photo two, as in the Ferris one, and this one. So again, looking at the digits, which is very close to the previous gap that we saw, remember, because it was a 29 file gap between these two photos. And now we have a 32 file gap. However, the biggest clue for this being a different date, likely the following day, is that the ground is completely dry. Look at that. It's dry. We clearly saw a very wet ground on both previous photos indicating either an early or ongoing rain. So I would say that due to the gap between the photos and the sun in the horizon, there is good reason to believe this is the sunrise of the second day. This will help us with the geolocation. This would be facing east-ish where the sun rises. We also know that the person was likely on their way to a train station because the following file is a train ride, isn't it? Additionally, look at this. There is a bus stop and an underground entrance. With all of this in mind and knowing that we're probably still in Tashkent, let's look at Google Maps. So let's click this again, close that, don't need that anymore. And here are the coordinates of the second photo, remember, with the Ferris wheel. And if we look for the train station, we will find it here. So here we go. This is the train station. So you can see the train tracks here. Let me zoom out again. So from here, to here. And let's bring the picture again and zoom out a bit because I'm going to talk about the sun. So if we establish that, let me just put this again. The sun is here, is in the horizon. This is therefore east. So we're going to mark here the east. It's not great. Sorry, it looks like a euro sign. And so therefore this would be west, which means that north is here and south is here. That means that the person was moving. Let me change the color here. Moving this direction, see, along the road, which means they're moving more or less southeast. Ish. And I'm saying ish because if you check the cardinal directions of where the sun rises and sets in Tashkent during February, you'll see that it's not exactly east to west. So let me quickly show you that as well. Let me just close all of this and let's bring suncalc.org. 
just need to go to Tashkent. So let's just write there Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Yeah. And we're going to put here in February. You don't really know exactly when in February because I'm not telling you. So we're just going to put here right in the middle, 14th of February. So you can see here where the sun rises and where it sets. So if you go and move it here, so this is the sunrise. So you can see it's not east, is it? It's a bit there. It's like east, southeast. And it then goes all the way and then it sets around there. Again, not west. It will be west, south, west. So you just need to take that into account. So now we can put all this information together and look at Google Maps again. So off we go again. We know that the person is heading this way because they'll be boarding a train at some point and it's early morning. So that makes sense. And so we're looking for a road that is facing south. East. So one of these roads possibly heading towards the train station. And also remember that we saw there was an underground entrance and there was a bus stop. So if we zoom in, you can see all the bus stops, all the bus stops, all the bus stops, but only one station close to a bus stop. So let's check this one out, shall we? Are we going to see if there's any street view with a bit of luck? There is, there is street view. So let's just check it out because remember we saw that the picture, which one is this one? It is a bit before the bus stop. So we're going to put our pigman there and we're going to rotate. So we're facing the correct direction and look at that. Let me actually go a bit forward. Isn't this the place? Yes, it is. <laughs> Let me just put the picture again so we can see it. Look at that bus stop, bus stop. We had the O from there. You would say Vero and then Samsung Galaxy. Let me just see. But now we can see Samsung Galaxy. Brilliant. So this is the correct place. Okay, so we have geolocated. There we go. We have now our third marker on Google Earth Pro. And let me just put it here and then just jump all there. So off we go on a little adventure again. And here you go. So this is the place that I just showed you on the map. And if you zoom out, look at that, you can see some very interesting things. So first photo was here at the market, the second one here at the park, and the third was here on the way to the train station. So the train station is here. So the person was moving at an interesting pace because we saw there was a 29 file gap between these two, 32 file gap between these two. So interesting, the distances are kind of more or less what you would expect, isn't it? Bonus question, what method of transportation was our target using when they took this photo? They were on a taxi. And how do I know that? This photo was taken on a road. Remember? So this was a big road that had four lanes and it was taken more or less on the second lane if you count from the middle. So it's possible the person was crossing, but seems highly unlikely because again, this is an eight lane road. There is also crossing nearby. We saw it. It was just there. Oh, let me zoom in again. So there was crossing here. So it makes no sense that the person was crossing here on this section. If you look at the picture, you can also see some very minor glare here on the corner. And it's quite likely that this was caused by taking a photo in front of glass. Such a car window, isn't it? On top of that, the person was on the left hand side, same side as the driver. And we have established that they are not local, therefore highly unlikely to have access to a private car. They were on the way to the train station. Therefore, the taxi is the most likely explanation. We also know that it was not Uber, for example, because a quick Google search will tell you that Uber does not operate in Tashkent. This information would be very useful if you were in law enforcement, for example, tracking down a person. There are a very limited number of taxi providers in Tashkent, and we know the person was likely picked up from a hotel and taken to the train station first thing in the morning. Okay, we're on a roll. Next file, the video. Now, this is where it gets exciting, although I probably have been excited the entire time anyway. So the previous photos established that the person was in Tashkent. But the area seen in the footage does not appear to be of a capital city. Remember, we saw a lot of houses, but they were quite short. They didn't have big buildings like we've seen in other pictures. So I don't think this is the capital. It's definitely more rural. So where did they go? We know that they went in the direction of the train station during sunrise. Here you go. So we know they were moving towards the train station in the was sunrise. We can also check Suncock again to see when sunrise in Tashkent during February 2024 took place. Tashkent, February 2024, sunrise 719. So this was on the 14th. We can check it out on the 1st, 734. So it says here on the left. At the end of the month, it was a 6.58. So there's a like half an hour gap. We're going to put it bang on the middle. That is actually not a correct date, but I'm not going to tell you the correct date. So what can we do now with that information? We can check what trains 
left from Tashkent after this time. We know that the sun seemed to already be a bit out in the horizon. I should not have closed the picture, now I need it again. So, so the sun was already out, we can see there's some light already and the person was still in the taxi at the time and they possibly arrived with some time to spare before boarding. So we're looking at trains leaving Tashkent just before or just after 8 a.m. So let's see if we can find a place with that sort of information. I mean, how hard can it be, right? So we just need to Google something like train timetable Tashkent. Here we go. We have plenty of results, but let's just check the first one. Uzbekistan train timetable. Brilliant. Look at that. That's a brilliant list. So now we're going to search for the word Tashkent. So it just gets highlighted because there's a lot of trains and a lot of places. And we know the person left from Tashkent. So kind of half the task is already answered, isn't it? We know they left from Tashkent. So now we need to scroll to almost 8 a.m. This starts at midnight. We don't need that. That's way too early. So let's go all the way to 7 something. 8 already passed. I was too excited. Okay, seven between 7.30 and 8.30. I think that's a good margin. Let me just use my thingy again. Oh, I like my thingy. It's very useful. So let me just put some... Uh, yeah, red. I like red. This. So this one. So these are possibilities. In fact, we can remove a few of them. So this one is not living from Tashkent. So that's useless. Not for us. This is also not living from Tashkent. We don't need this. So now we have Tashkent to Samarkand. I have no idea how to pronounce any of these names. So I'm going to butcher all of it. Tashkent to Adijan. Tashkent to Kukakand. Tashkent to Marjolan. Tashkent to again Samarkand, second time. Tashkent to Bukhara and Tashkent to Navoy. We have lots of options. Good options, but lots of them. So let me remove this again. So here you go. These are our options. And I marked them all on Google Earth Pro because we can quickly exclude some of them. So I'm going to zoom out all of this, all of this. So this is Tashkent. And we took the pictures. We don't need all these icons. And this is North. Let me just organize this. Okay. So Uzbekistan is a big country. Let me put here. This is my folder. So we have six cities. Remember, I mentioned all of them. Andijan, Marjolan, Kokakand. On the east here and on the west, we have Samarkand, Navoy, Bukhara. If we can determine the geographical direction the train was moving, we can exclude half of our options, isn't it? So the train was either going in this direction east or in this direction west. We just need to figure it out and exclude one of them. And we know that the train left in the morning, likely around 8 a.m. We don't know how long the person had been on the train before the video was recorded, but there are two things we can use to make a good guess. We can look at the data and we can look at the absence of data. Remember that? We mentioned that before. So first, let's look at the absence of data. Remember how the gaps between the three first photos from Tashkent were 29 and 32 files respectively. Now we have just 19. So look at that. Between this one and this one is just 19 digits. So there's 19 files between them that we just don't have access to. That means that there hadn't been that many photos or videos created between the person being in a taxi on the way to the train station, this one, to record this video. So it's safe to assume that perhaps it hadn't been that long. We don't know if they traveled a lot, but it hadn't been that long in terms of time. Now let's look at the data by checking out the sun and shadows seen on the footage. And I'm going to bring Suncock again because we're going to need that. So it's going to be here and I'm going to bring the video and I'm going to pause it in a good place. Here we go. We have the Suncock on the right, the frame of the video on the left. And we know that the footage was likely recorded between 9 a.m., 10 a.m., half an hour margin of error since we don't actually know when in February the person was in Uzbekistan. So if we move the sun to, I don't know, 9.30, 30, we can see that the shadow would be facing this way. So we will be able to see that the shadow was facing this way, which is more or less northwest, isn't it? Here we go, northwest. So if you follow this direction, so we can look at this in the same way. So let me just bring my little helper and we're going to highlight the sun there at the top. So the sun is more or less, so you can see the glare here. So the sun is more or less there. We can see the shadows on the ground. So you can see the shadow is being cast here, this direction. So if we put the cardinal directions as, let me get my pen, this one would be east. See, this would be west. This would be therefore south. This would be north. So this shadow now makes sense. It is definitely going northwest as we expected here. So northwest, this direction, this direction. So that means that our train was moving from east 
to west. I hope it makes sense. It made sense in my head. So we go look at the shadows, look at the direction where we expect the shadows to be. And the train is moving this direction, east to west, almost exactly, which is brilliant. Very helpful. With that in mind, let's now Google something simple as Uzbekistan railway, because we want to see a picture of this railway to see what direction these trains are moving. So this is a very good one. So it's here at the bottom, I'm going to click it, here we go. So this is a good figure here with all the railway network in the country. So now we can exclude all the cities to the east since we know that the train was moving west. So let me get Google Earth Pro again. So all of this can be excluded because the train was not moving east, it was moving west. So I'm going to click all the greens out no more greens so we have now three possibilities samarkand navoy bukhara and let's look at the picture again because there's only a few areas of this path that are almost exactly heading west and i'm going to zoom here oh my god here we go Oof. here we go and up tashkent again southwest we don't want that south East, we don't want that. Southwest again, we don't want, but this, this bit here is very west. It goes, look at that, almost exactly east to west. And also this long path, look at that, west, west, west. So this is great. None of the other options are great. So we have two good ones, which is great. We have narrowed down this a lot. And at this point, maybe some of you've noticed something because it also crossed my mind. So let me zoom out again and look at the top here. So this is no longer Uzbekistan. So what if the person left Uzbekistan and headed to Kazakhstan? Because that thought crossed my mind. Look at this, this path here does go a bit east. To west so what if they went to kazakhstan we don't actually know if they stayed in country do we so what now how do we confirm that the target of our manhunt remained in uzbekistan throughout their movement we quickly look at the last photo so where is our last photo because this was their destination where they left the train station and we can find some clues in the license plates of the vehicles we're going to zoom all the way there so this one's too blurry, you cannot actually tell much here, so we just have to leave it. Then this yellow here has what appears to be two digits, so I think it says there are 42 and two letters, maybe OA, not too clear, but it seems to be. This is definitely two digits, 42. And then if you look at this one, you cannot see much, but you can definitely see two letters, so there's IA. So we're looking at the place where the cars have license plates with two letters on the right, followed by at least two digits. And we can quickly check Wikipedia to compare license plates between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Let me just put them side by side. And here we go. On the left, we have Uzbekistan license plates, on the right, we have Kazakhstan license plates. Which one matches our criteria? It's obviously Uzbekistan. We have two letters and we have a few digits. It should be three. We only saw two, but there's definitely digits. This one should start with two digits. We clearly saw two letters. There's definitely two letters on the right. So we can infer that the last photo, this one, was taken still in Uzbekistan. The person did not leave the country. They did not go to Kazakhstan. Okay, this is great. Let's go back to the picture with the railway network. Here we go. So remember, we're looking at this path here or this path here. So let's get Google Earth Pro again our best friend and we're going to click this I already have a click here on the layers you'll have more and have transportation so I've clicked this one you cannot see because it's too zoomed out but I'm going to zoom here and this bit here corresponds to this bit here so you see there so this is not where we're looking for we're going to look for this one first but let's just move towards this area so I can show you how it looks like so it's going to be a clear stretch here we go so you can see the icons here i'm hoping you can see i'm not sure if it's very visible or not unfortunately i cannot zoom more than this if i go closer it'll just become smaller and smaller so it's not very useful but if i do a click and a click hopefully you'll see it and disappear show up and disappear okay so we're going to follow that remember so it goes down and we know it goes down and it goes left and now we're looking for a place remember we're looking for a place in mountains because we saw some mountains didn't we we saw some mountains that were very interesting and they had some horizontal lines so if we move across suddenly look at that this section is the bit we're looking for so it goes east to west almost exactly i have it here pointing towards north so suddenly we see some mountains and this is the things we're looking for mountains so let's just zoom in a bit see if you can see anything interesting about these mountains and look at that i did see something interesting about 
about these mountains? Look at the lines. Remember the lines we're looking for? They definitely look similar. So now we're here, let's look to the closest line crossing. Remember, we saw a road that was crossing the train tracks. So let me just see where is the closest one and it's this one so see it's crossing does it have two petrol stations one on each side of the road yes it does there's one here there is one there let me rotate the camera so you can actually see in the same angle as the person was recording the video so facing this way so look at that we have houses here there's a lot of houses we have this tiny structure remember this tiny structure we have the parallel road which then leads to this big road then if we move here this way as well you have all the trees remember how they were all aligned and then if you keep moving as the train went by you can see the interesting lines on the mountains so i'm going to put here the marker we have geolocated this is a train crossing and we're going to put here a and b so this is where the footage start recording and this is where it ended the recording so with that information we can easily calculate the moving speed of the train as it went past this town we know that the footage lasted 31 seconds and we just need to calculate the distance between points which is very easily done on google earth pro you just click there to measure and then you put a line one there to there and it just tells you how many kilometers you can change there if you want a different unit and with that information and with the 31 seconds you'll calculate that the train was traveling at around 135 kilometers per hour okay we're almost there this is such a long video i'm so sorry <laughs> now we just need to find out where the person alighted the train so what train station they stopped their ride because they didn't stop here the train did not stop they kept going so where did they stop where did they get out of this train there is just one more photo to geolocate and is this one so at this point we know that our target was not on the train on this last image in fact we can quickly note that they were on another taxi let's look at the top right corner here at the top we see a face i love looking at reflections there's so many tiny things that are hiding in plain sight look at that the person was clearly the driver let me show you if i can see this here so we have the side mirror here so this is the side mirror we have the middle mirror i don't know how you call it the one that's in the middle <laughs> whatever it's called i swear i drive so i should know that but it's fine and then we have the seat so i'm going to attempt to draw this but this is the seat so this is the passenger seat and the driver is here so you can see this is the glasses this is the nose this is the mouth oh my god i feel like this is a caricature and this is very offensive so i'm going to remove it there you go so we can see that our target was sitting on the back seat when they took this photo so where was this photo taken that's the main question right we still have three good options on our google earth pro let's go back again zoom all the way out remember the train was going somewhere there. So Samarkand, Navoy, Bukhara. Which one? So we're going to start with the closest one to us, which is the Samarkand. This is the closest to the geolocated point. And honestly, at this point, I was just a bit tired and I thought I could just keep it very simple. You know, my brain just wanted to rest. So I went to Google Maps and just wrote Samarkand Bridge. That's it. Because it's what we see here, isn't it? Where is the picture again? Here we go. We have a bridge. This is the main feature. We have also other things. We have a hill. There you go. We, we see quite a big hill in a city. We can see in the back there, it's a tall electricity mast we have here as well wide four lane road on each side but the main feature is definitely the bridge we want that so let's google that samarkand bridge so where do i have google maps it's here somewhere i've lost it already here we go uzbekistan brilliant samarkand bridge so there's quite a few which is not unexpected for a big city obviously so if we put the satellite layer on and then zoom in the city we'll see that there are several of them close to this section here which is a hill so let's zoom in a bit more so we have two big ones so we have two here and this one seems very similar to what we're looking for look at that the bridge goes up and there's a road that goes underneath on the left in the picture where's the picture again so you go this was on the left it was a hill which is something we see here as well so let's see if there's any google street view fingers crossed and there is so let's zoom in more or less here so i would expect the car to be here just before the bridge with these things here look at that power substation i think this might be our electricity mast so let's click it there and then i'm going to rotate so i'm facing that look at that 
We found the place. It's brilliant. It's exactly correct. Let me bring the picture again. Here you go. Let me just put it here so we can compare everything. Beautiful. Look at that. You can see the cable there. Cable is still there. The bridge is exactly the same. You can see, look at that, the posters that were there at some point with this brown mark across horizontally. There, look at that. You can see so much. This is brilliant. So this is it. We have geolocated our place. And if you go to the other side of the road, there we go, the electricity mast. So let's pin this on Google Earth Pro. So we go there and off we go, because I geolocated all of it. I know exactly where everything is now. So we all the way down. Samarkand. This is the geolocation of the final photo. And now out of curiosity, let's just check where was the train station as well. So let me put this again facing north and the train station is there. I also marked it. So this is a train station. This is where the photo was taken. So it is very likely that the taxi driver picked up our target after they alight the Samarkand train station and they drove this road. So you can see there, I actually marked everything here as well. So I'm going to click it. Look at that. They drove this road and we know they were on taxi as well. So that also answers the bonus question. So we did it. We completed OSINT exercise 26 task. Oh my God, this was so long. The person boarded the train in Tashkent. They liked the train in Sarmakand. What type of train they rode for this bonus question as well? It was the high speed train. We can confirm that by going back to our train schedule. Where is it? It's here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. So the train schedule from Tashkent to Samarkand. I'm going to use my thingy again. We have this one, Tashkent, Samarkand, daily, two hours, 13, high speed train, which is the Afro Siob. I have no idea how to pronounce that as well. Or we have this one, also Tashkent, Samarkand. So the person would have taken one of these. I'm pretty sure I know which one because I know what dates the person was there, but I cannot tell you how I got that information, sorry. <laughs> so, And then for the last bonus challenge, you just need to map all of this and, and calculate the total in whatever units you use, kilometers, miles, bananas, I don't know, whatever floats you build, how far they actually traveled. And I did that, I mapped everything. <laughs> God, I need a life. So I mapped all of it in several sections and you can see them all here. And if you just right click any of them, so I'm going to pick the big one. So this one and measurements, it will tell you the kilometers. So you just need to add everything to get to the final result. I'm not going to give you that because I cannot just give you everything, can I? So here we are at the end of OSINT exercise 026. Thank you for watching this far. This was quite a ride, pun intended. <laughs> Thank you for tagging along. Have a great week.